Welcome to Adrian's Corner. I am Adrian. And I'm Mr. K. And on today's episode, we'll be talking about Halo Infinite, or more specifically, Halo Infinite's campaign. Now that it's out, it's a chance to bring back Halo to the limelight, especially after the disappointing Halo 5 entry into the series six years ago. And so, 343 Industries has pulled out all the stops to try and bring this legendary IP back from the dead. It's everything Halo, starting now. So Halo Infinite, a topic we recently covered on this channel with a video called Halo Infinite Launch Mistakes, in which we covered the missteps of launching a multiplayer before the campaign or the game was fully ready. Which unfortunately has given rise to complaints and frustrations from the player base, ultimately causing a fracture within the Halo community. But now that the single player campaign is out, we finally got a chance this week to sit down and experience the game in all of its glory. <coughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry, I had a cough and you said glory. Go ahead. Right, minus the still missing co-op experience, of course. So how did 343 Industries do with the latest entry into the Halo franchise? To answer this, let's first take a look at the open world, a controversial element added to this game. Now, despite the concerns of many in the Halo community, the experience with it was a mixed bag. And what I mean by this is, on one hand, the sprawling landscape is beautiful. It allows for exploration, finding hidden camps with cosmetic gear upgrades and the or Master Chief suit upgrades. But on the other hand, it falls into the trap that so many open world games do. It's mostly empty space, and after the initial joy of seeing so much room to run, jump, or drive through, it quickly enters the realm of tedium. So speaking of tedium, one of the things I have to say in there is I've never once thought that I needed to say ever about an open world is it needs more content. It's barren. It really is empty. It's just nothing. I was going through and I was like, so do I have more to do or is this it? I was surprised. I thought there'd be more considering they're pulling out all the stops. Right, boredom becomes a constant theme here, especially if you are like myself, and I know, as you are, Mr. K, a person who enjoys full com game completionism. Now, finding all the hidden secrets to a game and unraveling all of its mysteries is something that I know that I enjoy and you do as well. But for Halo Infinite, it doesn't feel rewarding to do so. Sure, there are items to discover to help you on your journey, but for the most part, it's just fluff with not enough meat to the experience to make it worthwhile. Now, there are some good improvements over previous entries into the franchise here. There's the map with waypoints, it's a refreshing change. And the combat, it feels crunchy good in this game. To be frank, Halo's combat in Infinite is the best it's ever been. Absolutely, it's the best period for Halo hands down. It's been the smoothest since the original OG days. Like, this has been the biggest upgrade combat-wise, which I absolutely am enthusiastic about, and I, if they do make any more, I want this style of combat to keep getting better and better. For a Halo franchise, it's the best. Right, the weapons are great, the rewarding crunch sound that they added when enemies are killed is a nice touch, and, which, by the way, brilliant decision by the devs at 343, so good job. And that, in turn, helped ease some of the boredom of the open world by making fights at least engaging and fun. Now you add to this the more plentiful allied troops joining the fray at safe zones or out in the open world, which added more entertainment to fighting battles against greater and greater numbers of enemy soldiers as you went along. Well, and to add what they did well with combat, one of the other things I have to say is the Sentinel gun was the best. The energy beam when you fired it and hit the enemies and disintegrated them was spot on the best part of all the weapons hands down. I found myself just wanting to only, only use that gun. And outside of the boss fights, which, <clears throat> oof, uh, but outside of the boss fights, it was the best weapons, hands down, just deleted everything it came across. And I loved it. It made for an exciting, crunchy, and like, ooh, what else can I disintegrate in this? Now, 
Moving along here, I want to mention another good thing was the suit upgrade system, which is a nice touch here as well. It helped to reward exploration, and even though there isn't enough to keep me satisfied, I have to applaud 343 Industries for this direction. For example, it was a nice touch to be able to improve the shields on Master Chief's armor, something I've always wished they had done in previous games in the Halo universe. And then there is the Cortana replacement. Now, while I did see some complaints online about changes to the character visually, for me personally, I didn't mind so much these changes and I found her character enjoyable overall, even if she seemed a little bit too naive, even for an AI. Well, which was hilarious because when I first saw her, I was like, ah, I, I'm not really encouraged by this, but I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. You know, it's Halo, let's give it a shot. And her banter with Master Chief throughout the game to me was one of the best highlights of the storyline. My favorite, hands down, is the banter with, she's talking about his suit and she can smell the enemy. And he's like, wait, you can smell? She's like, mm, yeah, I'm through your suit. Oh, and uh, by the way, you don't smell, you smell nice. So speaking of body odor and what smelled good and what didn't, let's shift on over then to where Halo Infinite drops the ball. Now something I noticed that they introduced into Halo 5, which is forcing the players to wait through cutscenes before boss fights, here in this footage you can see the enemy coming down the elevator. Now rather than letting me just nuke him before he steps off, I'm forced to sit patiently, politely letting the enemy uh, give me a speech as he steps off the elevator. And uh, you know, maybe give him a cup of tea and, and a high five before I'm allowed to fight him. It is utter nonsense here. It's certainly not classic Halo, and absolutely an annoying and aggravating mechanic. Most definitely, the whole aspect of the boss fights was weird because, yes, they started introducing that into the later games after Halo 3, but Halo never really had boss fights. They had many versions, but they were never an actual official, this is the only thing you're going to fight outside of maybe at the end of Halo 3. But... The fact that they would force you to sit there and watch him come down the elevator, it just kept pulling me out of the game over and over every time they would do something similar to that effect. And they did that a lot in this game, and I mean a lot. Right, and that leads me then to talk about the horrible autosave in this game. I can't tell you how many times I found myself in an instant death scenario, and the only way to get out of this was to exit the game and restarting would put me back to a previous, an older save. It was ridiculous. Now I wanna shift gears again and, and I wanna go back to the open world which I touched upon earlier and where the lack of things to do eventually leads to boredom from exploration. And really, aside from this, the biggest sin here of the open world is that it causes Halo Infinite's narrative to become unfocused, which unfortunately is something that open world games do usually suffer from. And particularly here with this game, the story itself is put out on the back burner for the sake of having it an open world, which is a misstep that will certainly hurt this game in the eyes of many of the fan base. And speaking of the main campaign, this by far is the shortest Halo campaign ever, period. I don't care what anyone has to say, it's the shortest. That's it. It, honestly, when I actually sat down to do the rest of the campaign, because after the initial mission, I just did the open world. And when I actually sat down to do the main campaign, I realized that I could finish the game within about a two and a half hour span at most, and that was on the harder difficulties. If you're doing this on the lowest difficulty, an hour at most, and that's if you're being lazy. It's gonna be super easy to do, very quick. And and honestly, I was flabbergasted that someone thought that this was an excellent way to release this game. Because there was hours of footage and gameplay that should have been in this game that they tell you later in the other story. And it's like, wait, why didn't we play this back then? At the very beginning, that would have made more sense for how all of this is transpiring and would have brought more depth and interesting facts to the story, but how it was displayed? It's short, it's pointless, and I didn't really feel like I gave two cents about really anyone in the story outside of Chief and Cortana because, well, I'm an original OG player from Halo, and they are my two favorite characters for Halo, just period. Right, and then when you take that step back, 
and you realize that the open world makes that even worse where you're not really even focused on the short campaign. All you really need to do is compare it to the first entry into the Halo franchise. The driving force for the game was the narrative that ramped up as the game progressed, leading to the Halo 1's crescendo ending. It had everything, space opera, drama, sacrifice, the whole nine yards. Which then leads me to the worst aspect of this game, the writing, if you could call it that. The characters, both the villains and the allies, were for the most part, awful. Your mysterious pilot ally is just a whiny, crybaby teenager of a man who, despite knowing that his family's life is at stake, if they fail, can't be man enough to do his duty. Well, I gotta cut in here because, to be honest, yes, he was the most annoying part of the game, without a shadow of a doubt. And they do explain why he's behaving that way later in the game. But honestly, even with the explanation, I was still like, okay, and that excuses this writing why? Right, but even with that as an excuse, the problem here is that they try and use him as the primary emotional anchor to Master Chief's get her done attitude, but it just comes across as childish and annoying. Now, let us not also forget the utterly inane and incompetent leadership of the Banished. Frankly, it felt like this script was written by a child. There are no adults anywhere except for maybe the Master Chief character. I mean, how in the world are we supposed to believe that these inept, banished goofballs have somehow survived this long in the universe? They are about as stupid as the New Order leadership from the Disney Star Wars films. It hurts my head trying to comprehend the thought process of the script writers for this story. It's absolute garbage. And this is honestly the biggest detriment to the game. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me Adrian, that you did not like being told that I am now your rival over and over and over and over and over again? I thought that was the best part. Oh, you mean like this? I have caused no views on me. I want you to know my name too. To know my legend. How else will you beg me for mercy? Oh, I mean, his legend speech was epic. Like, I totally wanted to hear that over and over again, like 95,000 times. Like, you know, in Halo 1, 2, 3, where the villain was just going to say to you every time they saw you, I am your, I am your villain. I am your legend. I will defeat you. No, they were like, oh my God, it's the demon. Go kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Right. And this game falls into the classic movie and television tropes of just stupid villains who have to have their stupid speeches and you have to sit there and go, oh no! Seriously, just no, stop. And one last thing regarding that, which was the most aggravating thing for me, is look, if you want to have your villain talk and talk and talk, okay, I honestly don't care. But don't force the player to have to sit there and actually force them to watch a very close up of one of the worst CGI mouth animations that I've ever have seen in next gen quote games right and all of this is a shame too because the game does get some things right like what we mentioned earlier with the combat easily being the best in the franchise with 343 industries being so careful to make sure fights never felt overly familiar always throwing things to mix it up to keep you on your toes but there still isn't anything in this game that you could categorize as spectacular, certainly not the script. Uh, and with combat, instead of spectacular set pieces or fights, you're stuck with mediocre boss fights, which mostly consisted of kiting around a small arena, figuring out the best way to crack their shields off before finishing them off. There just, there wasn't necessarily anything wrong with the combat, or the overall, even the open world, you could, you could, you could have let it slide if there had just been a decent story at its core. By being unable to get lost in a good story, it just allows for all the missteps and mistakes to wipe away all the positive experiences that you might otherwise have had from this game. It's just, it was a huge, huge mistake. And you know what it felt like, to be honest, and I hate to say this because it's Halo, but it honestly felt that they were planning for DLC because they rushed this game. This game is a year too early. It, the story's just not there. And they should have done more with the story, but they failed to do so. And I feel like they're gonna rush DLC. Or oh, you wanna play the previous story? DLC, uh-huh. Because for what is that right now, I can't understand why they're justifying $60. It, it, it makes no sense. 
Well, and that, and that kind of wraps up the overall synopsis of this video. The game has some nice elements to it. Um, you have great combat, but with the story being garbage and the open world being so sparse, uh, and unfortunately with no co-op and, and the multiplayer already being free, there just really isn't that much here to the game. And that is truly unfortunate. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for being with us here today. From Adrian's Corner, I'm Adrian. And I'm Mr. K. And we'll see you all next time.